but we begin with that deadly mass shooting in Louisville, Kentucky. A fifth victim has now died after a gunman opened fire inside a bank conference room yesterday. Eight other people were injured. We're also learning the shooter was employed by the bank and killed by police and that he planned and live streamed the attack. The police chief providing more details earlier today. We have also learned that he purchased the weapon used in this tragic incident on yesterday, on April the 4th. He purchased the weapon legally from one of the local dealerships here in Louisville. We have executed a search warrant um, on his residence and we have recovered items and we cannot get into specific details on what we recover at this time because again, the investigation is ongoing. Bube on the ground there in Louisville following the story for us. She joins me live now. So, Faith, this is more than 24 hours since this deadly mass shooting. What else are we learning? Well, Alexis, one of the most chilling things we learned during that news conference this afternoon uh, is the fact that the shooter allegedly warned someone. They called someone uh, before this shooting. This happened, uh, of course, we don't know the timeline in terms of when it happened, whether it's right before the shooting or weeks before, but we know that uh, the shooter allegedly either called or texted at least one person. He allegedly indicated to that person that he was suicidal and contemplating harm, but officials say there's really no no Kentucky law right now in the books to deal with a situation like that. Uh, we also learned this afternoon that officers executed a search warrant, and I think it, it's worth repeating from what the chief just said. Uh, they were at the shooter's home shortly after that shoot uh, shooting here yesterday, and they removed a lot of items that they're going through that evidence right now. Officials are, of course, calling this a targeted shooting because the suspect actually knew each of these victims. Uh, he worked with them for years. He actually started here as an intern and has been pro had been promoted a few times and of course two former bank employees we talked to said that you know he was friendly they had no idea that he would do something like this they said that he was an avid sports fan and really didn't see anything that would indicate any kind of red flag in terms of committing such a gruesome act uh, ABC News also learned that the shooter recently found out that he was about to be fired uh, we're not sure exactly how close to the shooting that was supposed to when that was supposed to happen uh, but investigators say that he purchased that gun on April 4th six days before that shooting it was legally purchased from a local dealership, and now because of the way the laws are written here in Kentucky, that gun will likely end up on the streets again. It will be auctioned off with the proceeds going to police. That is hard to believe. I, I hadn't heard about that Kentucky law. Uh, this is the, for those who, who are keeping count, it is disturbing to say that this is the 15th mass shooting in the U.S. this month. So, Faith, just break down these troubling numbers for us. Yeah, it was quite remarkable hearing officers, officials from police to uh, the mayor to the medical officer being very blunt about what needs to happen in the wake of the shooting in terms of gun reform. Uh, they say that they are weary, they are tired, they are heartbroken, and that this level of violence is beyond anything that anyone should accept in any community, especially in this community of Louisville. Already this year, 40 people have been shot to death here in the city, even here at the scene of this mass shooting yesterday. As police were responding, to the shooting, someone was shot and killed just two miles from here, less than two miles from here. Police say in less than two weeks here in April, there have been 15 mass shootings in total for the city of Louisville. And so, of course, Kentucky, uh, of course, look at the officials here that we've talked to and the ones that are talking about this incident, from the mayor to the police chief uh, to the governor and the medical officer, all talking about the need for reform and how quickly that needs to happen. Uh, Kentucky, of course, is one of the 26 states that actually allow eligible adults to carry guns without a permit. And back in 2019, the state removed provisions that required background checks for a concealed carry across the country. There have been 146 mass shootings so far this year. Absolutely heartbreaking statistics as this community continues to mourn here. Uh, we heard from the Louisville mayor, Craig Greenberg, who tells ABC News we have to take action. They're devastating numbers, mind-boggling numbers, Faith. Talk to me a little bit about what happens next at Old National Bank, which was the site of this mass shooting. Do we know when the bank is going to reopen? Is it still an active crime scene? 
Well, we know police have removed the crime scene tape around the building, and so it's not active right now. I'm not sure about the inside of the building. Uh, but in terms of reopening this bank, this is not something that we are aware of that has been announced at this point. But this bank, of course, the employees there just lost five of their um, their co-workers in that building, some of them senior executives of this bank. Of course, they need time to clean up and repair any physical damage. Uh, inside, the windows have been blown out in the front of the building. There were several windows blown out yesterday. Today. Even over my shoulder, we saw workers over there uh, this morning trying to board up one of the windows here. So there's going to be some need for repairs. There's going to be need for cleanup. I would imagine that they plan to uh, open if they plan to open at all after this tragedy, that it will be wa a while before we see that happen. I can imagine both emotional and mental healing going on there within that bank as well. Faith Abube, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.